Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. <laughs> Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Lion. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Crystal Maiden. Ten seconds remaining. 
Five seconds remaining. Dire team back. The undying wakes. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team back. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Flada. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining.
Radiant team pick. Axe. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Mirana. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Wraith King! Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team back. Dire team pick. Radiant team pick. Sniper. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. You may now select your heroes. Prepare for battle.
30 seconds to battle. begins.
first of many bloodings. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. 
The prize is mine. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer are scanning. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. The armor melts away.
Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Then Radiant are scanning. Come in handy. Dyer's top tower is under attack.
illusion. Radiant's courier has been Shadows killed. Take us. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. scanning. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant's middle tower has fallen.
Visibility. Roshan has fallen into the river. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Bottom tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower is under attack. The this is mine. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. them all in my wake. Ability.
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. helps. Shaggy, this will come in handy. Dyer's bottom shrine is under attack. Dyer's bottom shrine has fallen. scanning. Dyer are scanning. Dyer's top shrine is under attack. Dyer's top shrine has fallen. Illusion!
Soldier's fortune.
Radiant Team Bat. Hmm. Dire Team Bat. Radiant Team Bat. Team back. Radiant team back. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team back.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. even got wow I'll turn the sound off because it'll come through the mic yeah yeah Okay, are we on? Yeah, it should be. Oh, some water. okay. All right, I guess I'm going to be uh, commenting on this uh, this next game of Dota. So far, so good uh, when it comes to the Radiant side of Chicago and the Dire side of ATU Esports. Radiant has chosen Earthshaker. Yeah, Radiant has chosen Earthshaker as their very first pick. That is going to be a very great character when it comes to setting up kills. He is countered, uh, he is considered a support. He's got very good stun locking capabilities. I wonder what uh, ATU Esports is going to do to counter this. On the band side, it looks like no one likes to play Zeus. Zeus is not fun to fight. They've chosen Ogre Magi. Ooh. This is going to be very neat. Ogre Magi is a very fun character to play with his uh, his chance to roll very high uh, high number stuns as well. That'll probably help her against Earthshaker. It looks like they've also banned Axe. Axe is no fun to fight. <laughs> Axe was the the last. If anybody was watching, Axe was the big red guy with the axe. <laughs> I, get, I don't know why he's got that name, but he's basically got a big axe, and he calls himself Axe. And uh, he's pretty strong because he's got a passive where he'll actually just, every time you hit him, there's a chance that he'll reflect that damage back and counterattack you. And so if you're if you're a melee character and you go against Axe, you're probably going to lose because he'll just uh, counter swipe you. One of Axe's builds is where he also has something called Blade Mail, which will... Uh, cause you to heal activate it's an active uh, item where it will also have you take more damage when you attack him so he'll activate that have you attack him and then he'll counter you and you'll just he'll just tear you apart they've also went with undying that is also very good because earthshaker is a strength character and undying's ability is that he will actually take the strength of characters in his little aoe attack He'll actually just suck, like take their strength from them for a little bit, and that's good in for Undying because he's also a strength character. That will make him very strong. So in order for Radiant to counterpick the Undying, they are gonna have to not pick more strength characters. Things would that I would not recommend would be Pudge, um, Centaur, War Runner, which I saw them uh, play last game, would not be a very good pick against Undying, uh, as well as Tidehunter. They're doing Abaddon, or Abaddon. I don't know exactly how you want to say that. People say it both ways. Abaddon is very good at protecting his team with his Mist Coils, and his, uh, I, I don't, <laughs> Mist Coils is ranged attack. I don't know what his spheres are called at the moment. I'm drawing a blank on it. But he's, uh, he reminds me of Zarya from Overwatch. Oh, it, apparently it looks like they have banned Sniper from their role this time on Radiant. So that's going to cause our uh, Sniper player for ATU is going to have to try someone different. 
On the Dire side, it looks like they've actually banned Centaur War Runner and Mirana and Juggernaut, which Mirana and Juggernaut are both skill-based uh, heroes, so that's kind of narrowing the, the carries down to strength carries, which is what's falling into Undying. Very good idea. Very good tactic on the ATU part. Oh no. Looks like they have uh, banned Terror Blade, I think. Terror Blade is a skilled based uh, hero. Man, I remember when I didn't really uh, play Terror Blade much. He's supposed to be really dang good. <laughs> he's, he's considered a carry. He's kind of hard to play, but he can really carry. He uh, makes reflections of himself. Uh, what is that, Clinks? Did they get rid of Clinks? Alright, that's also a... Uh, I'm not quite sure if... Uh, Radiant is has those heroes that they've... The top is what they've banned, or if... Oh yeah, it is, because they've banned Sniper. Okay, you can see what they've banned on each side. So they've gotten rid of Clinks. He's also a very heavy carry, uh, skill-based character. So he, they're basically having to play into the Undying Hands. Oh, they have a Tide Hunter. He's going to be the main tank of the of the fight. Tide Hunter has very nice abilities when it comes to keep, uh, keeping himself alive. Oh, they're going Silencer. Silencer will be a very good pick because every time someone dies by Silencer, he takes two intelligence from them permanently. Permanently takes two intelligence and gives it to himself. Uh, of course, Silencer uh, pretty much has a global silence, which think of it like a Sombra EMP, and it... it, it prevents the team from using any kind of moves to protect themselves. Yeah, Templar Assassin for the Dire side. Templar Assassin was super OP when I played and they had to buff or they had to nerf her considerably, but she's still really good because she has her side blades which is, does pure damage. Pure damage is just goes straight through armor uh, and will just do a pure amount of damage to the enemy. I imagine she will be their mid lane character. And I imagine that they are now going to be looking for someone to lane with Tidehunter. I wouldn't be surprised if Ogre Magi and Undying were in the same lane together. They need to have a support. I imagine that ATU should choose a support for Tidehunter. I think their silencer will probably be the mid lane. Oh, they have Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight is a very good carry, but we'll see how well he fares against Undying because Dragon Knight gets a lot of strength during uh, the fights. I do wonder what Radiant side is going to do with their mid lane. It could either... I think it's going to be Silencer as their mid lane uh, character. 
I just don't know who's going to be running with what. I imagine Abaddon and Earthshaker are going to be laning together. And so they probably need someone with Dragon Knight. I mean, Dragon Knight works with Earth Earthshaker, but um, Dragon Knight has a stun of his own. So they might end up just stun locking the dire side. The support that I would say for Dire would I would heavily recommend uh, Crystal Maiden, and she's always a great support. And if anything, uh, Rubik, maybe they have Silencer, and that's going to make it really hard for them to be able to use their moves. Uh, they already they already picked Templar Assassin, but if they didn't pick Templar, I would have suggested Anti Mage. And their final pick will be Lone Druid. Oh, wow. I love to see him in the fight. Lone Druid's got a cool ability where uh, he summons a bear. <laughs> That's his ultimate. He just has a bear companion. He's like Annie from League of Legends. Yeah, he's, the bear just does whatever he does. And he can actually send his bear off to go do whatever he wants. So he can send his bear to actually support... Uh, a lane by itself if he needs to while Lone Druid goes off and does something else he also transforms uh, his ultimate he transforms into a bear himself so there's like two bears that run around the, the, the map he's actually quite a fun character to play and to watch Alright, with 10 seconds to spare, let's see what the dire side chooses to counter this last pick. They chose Slark. Ooh, that's also very good. Slark takes, uh, Slark takes skill away from the characters. So with Undying taking away strength and Slark taking away skill, it's going to really mess up some of these characters like Lone Druid. Uh, I wouldn't even say Silencer, though. Silencer is going to probably be the main threat of this fight throughout uh, throughout this, this match between Chicago and Arkansas Tech. Were the teams supposed to change their sides on where they like between Radiant and Dire? You know, you would think I would. You think I would know that? Oh, <laughs> I, I'm not familiar with the actual uh, professional side of Dota as 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 in as in this form. Um, but I could have swore that you would change after each match because, ironically enough, Radiant has like a 51 percent win rate against the Dire side. Okay, it's been statistically measured that way. I don't know why. I think it's a lot of people say it's the angle because you can't change the camera angle on yeah. uh, between Dire and Radiant. You're always looking the same way whether they uh, they're looking at you or not. Maybe clicking up to the right's harder than clicking down to the left. You never know. But there's it's been proven that teams win <laughs> one percent higher. That's interesting. Yes. The. Uh, they didn't choose a support for their final pick uh, on ATU side. We'll see how that goes for them. 
Yeah, he's that last game too. Yeah, I th- well, I mean, Ogre Magi can be considered a support, and he's very good at being a support. I think him and Slark are going to be running together then. That's going to be really, really interesting to watch. If Ogre Magi can get those stuns off, he's got an ability where he'll, uh, if he turns it on, his ultimate, it, it'll uh, multicast where he has a chance where he can actually throw his stun multiple times and okay. chain stun somebody for a longer period of time. Is that an RNG type thing, or is that like... Yeah, it's an RNG type okay. thing. It's just a roll. You, you have just a chance. There's a chance of him either attacking once or attacking four times. Okay. It's one to four chance, and it, it's crazy. Uh, another character that I can... Uh, Another character I can relate to on that is Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight also has a chance of stunning someone between one second and four seconds with his stun ability. Yep, okay, Templar Assassin and Dragon Knight is actually going mid. I would have thought it was Silencer. Is this something a bit unconventional? Uh, I wouldn't say it's unconventional. It has been a while for me. Uh, Dragon Knight, I can see he can hold mid by himself quite often. He has his Fire Breath. Which not only does damage to creeps, it also keeps Templar Assassin away from him. Uh, at the same time of giving Dragon Knight armor, and uh, it melts the armor of whoever he breathes fire on, okay. so it weakens the creeps for his on his side. Dragon Knight can also have a passive where he self heals. He's got a passive where he heals himself, so he can stay into the fight longer. But that won't really help much with uh, Templar Assassin. Ogre Magi and Slark are up on top lane. Looks like Abaddon's already taken quite a bit of damage. Oh, Earthshaker's moving around for that stun. He's see, he's, he's getting into position for his wall stun. He's going to close them off. Earthshaker's got an ability like May from Overwatch. Okay. He can hit you and stun you in place, and it prevents you from getting through the rock wall. Is a, So the wall's not breakable? The wall is not breakable. You have to wait for it to come down. And their pick of choice would probably be Slark. Slark's a very weak character, so if they can pick him off, uh, they can win the fight, because Ogre Magi cannot do enough damage by himself to win in the team fight. Earthshaker's my, my favorite. <laughs> he's one of my favorite characters to play in Dota. He's, he's a very good support. He's usually a good counter pick against Broodmother and uh, Meepo, characters that have a lot of uh, characters, like they can spawn... Uh, kind of a summoner type character? Yeah, spawn clones of themselves or have a bunch of enemies around, mm-hmm. because his Echo Slam will multiply damage the more enemies around him. Okay. Oh, here comes Slark. This might be the first pick. Nope. They gotta watch that Earthshaker. He still has full mana bar. He is raring to go on his slam. It looks like Lone Druid's got his bear out. That'll really help them. That will really help them push bottom lane. But with Tidehunter there, Tidehunter takes less damage. Looks like he's kind of being the the so is, the, bag. is the bear its own separate uh, kind of AI, or is it yes. something? Okay. Yeah, he can. It it it'll attack on its own if you set it to attack on its own. The bear uh, also has its own passive abilities as well, so okay. it has a a chance to stun or overgrowth. Uh, it can stun you. It kind of lock you in place. The uh, lone druid's a very neat character. His bear is melee, but his uh, himself he throws little uh, glaives. Okay. It looks like they are going after. They're heavily aggroed on both Undying and Tidehunter. Oh no. Oh, he made it out. Good. He has got to watch it. He is getting low on health. Oh, they might get the first pick. Tider. He might overplay his hand there. Tidehunter is the tank side of the characters, 
And uh, he's he's kind of protecting Undying while Undying is uh, taking the strength from the enemy. Uh, you can see his little particle effect around his wrists. That's how you know that he's been taking strength from the enemy team. And that if he's taking strength from his bear, like he just did, that's making his bear do less melee damage, which in turn is causing them to not do as much on the push. Okay. So Tidehunter's taking the brunt of the attack while he's in the back. So he's defending. almost a perfect, uh, perfect fit to go against this yes. character. Yes. This lane. Oh yes, definitely. Because not only is he taking strength from the bear, he's also taking strength from Lone Druid. It's almost like he's taking strength from a second character. Okay. So he's got potentially three characters he can take that strength from and use against them. There goes the wall, which it looks like he walled off uh, Abaddon to protect him from the the gank. And there's First Blood. Looks like Dragonite was able to vanquish. Uh, oh no, that was Tidehunter actually. Tidehunter had bit it there. And it's causing them to fall back on the bottom lane. Templar Assassin is a very good uh, counter to Dragon Knight on this mid lane because Templar Assassin does pure damage with her Psy Blades. And pure damage breaks through armor. And uh, Dragon Knight, of course, since he's a knight, he gets armor passively every level he levels up uh, into his passive. So her being able to eat through his armor and be able to do the equal amount of damage to him no matter what really helps her stay alive in this mid fight really helps her prevent Dragon Knight from uh, just slowly s snowballing her way in. Looks like Slark is low. He's, he's managed to heal back. That's good. Earthshaker's getting into position, ready for an, uh, a slam. He might pin off uh, Slark here, and that might cause them to get a pick from that. ATU has to be very careful because they don't see Earthshaker. Oh, now they do. When he goes into this right side, he can't see anymore. Up here comes the pick. Alright, there goes Templar Assassin getting the Earthshaker. That is a good gank. Very good on their part. That helps even the odds. Now, is this Dragon Knight's ultimate? Yes, this is Dragon Knight's ultimate. He actually turns into a dragon himself. Uh, hence the name Dragon Knight. His first stage, his first level of his ability is uh, he's got an acid spitting dragon. And his acid spitting dragon uh, will do damage over time when he shoots you. And uh, it can all and you can level it up to a fire dragon and then to an ice dragon in the last tier. Depending on how he plays it, uh, some dragon knights will actually level out, flesh out their other three main uh, abilities before he upgrades to the next dragon. Earthshaker almost got that pin off to uh, funnel that Templar Assassin into Dragon Knight, which would have been bad on the tech side's uh, line. Templar Assassin can see Dragon Knight moving down the, the, the main lane, but he cannot see her since uh, she has the high ground. She did take double damage, though. She does have the potential to get a pick here, even with her low health, if they play it safe. Ah, not with two people in the lane, I would not recommend. Oh no, Silencer's going top. They are keeping Earthshaker back. They don't want him setting up to get another pin off. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like they are going to try to push top lane. This is about to be one of the first team fights of the game. Silencer has silenced them from using any moves. Well, that's what the little skulls above the head are. Or I think that... Actually, no, I think that causes damage if they use moves. The white skulls are the silence. Earthshaker's in position. Now, they... Dyer can't see Earthshaker inside these trees. The trees are blocking the line of sight. They don't know he's there, but they... They do know that since he's done it before, they can't play up. They know that they're playing into their hand when they're playing aggressive like that. They have to stay close to the tower. If they don't, Slark will get uh, walled off like that, and that'll... Oh, there it goes. Here comes the team fight. Ogre Magi just barely surviving, protecting his friend. Oh, there he goes, and there goes Slark as well. Oh no, he actually made it. Never mind. They still even the odds in that fight. Undying moved up to help. There's Templar taking a bounty rune. Oh no, they're back. They're going to get that pick on that Slark. Now oh, here comes Templar Assassin going after the Earthshaker. Ah, oh, Baden's protecting her. He's got like a Zarya bubble kind of thing where it, it takes damage until a certain point and then it'll actually shoot that damage out. Does the shielding benefit uh, him at all? No, he doesn't get any damage from it, but uh, it kind of helps as him staying in the back line. Uh, he can cast it on himself and he can cast it on Earthshaker or whoever's in front of him. So a character that's really aggro heavy he can put on them and they, uh, the enemy team either wants to decide whether they can attack the bubble and pop it so they can do damage to Earthshaker or they have to wait for it to disperse before they can decide to attack. It helps buy time to keep the uh, the one who has the bubble on them alive. Looks like it's going to be a big uh, push for top lane. Templar Assassin has teleported in. Here comes Dragon Knight. Earthshaker's going to Echo Slam. Oh no, that was a big kill. Earthshaker's low. Baden is still live. Templar Assassin's coming in. Can she clean up the silencer? Oh, is she can. Oh no! And there goes the double kill. And that will cause Dyer to lose their top tower. They are gonna try a second team fight. Will they do it? Ogre Magic can get the stun off. Slark's already at half health. Ogre Magi is also at half. Ogre Magi is down once again. Undying is going to try to make his way out. That Dragon Knight stun. That's some rough stuff. Wow. They actually managed to defend their top tower at the moment. Oh, there comes the Earthshaker. Okay, he's going to be looking for Slark. Will they find him? Oh, yep. That's going to be it for another team fight. They did lose their top tower. That makes Radiant 9 to 4. They might decide to just push all the way through top lane. That looks like what they're doing. They're ready for another team fight. Yeah, it looks like Radiant is confident enough that they can take this tower as well without having any trouble from the dire side.
Ogre Magi is by himself. He's going to get picked if he does that. Here comes the jump. Holy cow. Now keep in mind, every time Silencer here is in the battle, every time someone dies in the radius of Silencer, he takes two intelligence from the enemy team, whoever dies. So that forces Dyer to slowly but surely lose more and more mana each time. So that causes them to have a potential to have less and less moves. Wow, they managed to get a triple kill protecting their home front. And they're still going to go. They're pinning... Uh, Lone Druid down. And that lets them have a full wipe. Now would be the time to push on the Dire side to help even the odds. Two are already back on Radiant. They probably don't have time to push anymore. It looks like Slark is wanting to uh, attack Roshan this early on in the game. Oh, they're setting up for a pick on the Dragon Knight. Okay, they go. Only two are going in after him. Oh, Dragon Knight has a Shadow Blade, I think. Managed to turn invisible and escape that. Dragon Knight can see them, and they can see him. Does Earthshaker have Blink Dagger yet? No, Earthshaker does not have Blink Dagger yet. So he can't just come in and slam yet. That's good on their part. Here comes the attack on the mid tower. Dire side will have to gather their forces to try to defend. Here comes the slam. Down goes Ogre Magi, down goes Slark, down goes Undying. Tidehunter also takes it as well as Templar Assassin. And that will give time for Radiant to push the mid barracks tower on Dire side. They will also be able to take a barracks from it, too. This is going to put some really, really hard pressure on ATU because they have to decide whether they should defend or they should try to go on the offensive. Going on the offensive is very risky because of the, the big gap in kills between the Radiant and Dire side. So it's going to be really hard to farm gold at the same time as defend uh, their, their uh, Ancient. This is the very tricky part in the game. On, on the, they have to play very, very precise. Or it's going to cause them to... Uh, for, it's going to cause them to let... The Radiant continue to snowball.
since Sniper was uh, banned this time, they don't have a character that can sneak off and push towers by themselves without having any kind of trouble. Looks like they're going to go try to push top again. They're going to try to take the top tower. We're going to see another team fight here. Here comes the team fight. Going in to push that tower. Slark already at half health. And that's going to lose the tower there for Dire side. There's the Tidehunter ult to stun the enemies. Down goes Slark. Templar Assassin invisible. Can she make it? Nope. That is another team fight down on the dire side. Templar Assassin did buy back, I think. But that will be game. And it looks like Chicago will take the W against ATU. I guess that's it.